I'm your host, Heather Dawson, and welcome to RC Spotlight, an exciting program highlighting businesses here in Rancho Cucamonga. Just another reason to work, play, and live in our beautiful city. Well, let's start off the episode with the RC Family Sports Center. The city is breaking ground on the new RC Family Sports Center with three indoor and three outdoor courts. The facility will offer residents the perfect place to engage in activities like basketball, volleyball, and more. Let's take a look. These are exciting times for sports enthusiasts in Rancho Cucamonga. Construction is underway on two major sporting complexes near the Epicenter Stadium. The Rancho Cucamonga Goals Soccer Facility with 10 artificial turf fields is expected to be completed in early 2018, while the nearby RC Sports Center is aiming for a spring opening. The RC Sports Center broke ground in April and is located across the street from Lone Mart Field where the Quakes play. When completed, it'll boast 55,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor activities. So we're going to have an a indoor gymnasium facility to house three indoor basketball courts and volleyball courts, as well as um, an outdoor facility with a, with a cover for uh, three additional uh, basketball courts. Um, in addition, we'll have uh, staff office space, a conference room, uh, a multi-purpose uh, slash party room. In addition, there'll be something called the Commons, which essentially will be viewing windows around the courts, as well as a cafe offering food and drink. The new RC Sports Center is replacing the existing RC Family Sports Center on San Bernardino Road. So replacing the, uh, the older gym will have a lot more amenities as well as the, um, the courts inside of the gymnasium will be uh, regulation high school uh, basketball courts. And we will be able to run three games simultaneously, whereas before we could only run two because we had to provide seating in that center court. In addition to the three combination indoor basketball and volleyball courts situated within the main facility, the sports pavilion will consist of three outdoor courts covered by a pre-engineered metal roof so competitors and fans alike can enjoy our beautiful Rancho Cucamonga weather. And to take advantage of our sunshine, connections for future solar power expansion are being included, along with connections for an electric car charging station. It will also feature a backup generator so the building can be used as a shelter during an emergency. The facility is projected to produce revenue. Um, a lot of that will be used to support the, the upkeep of the building, the maintenance, as well as continue to run um, community services held in the building and, and elsewhere in the city and provide uh, uh, support for the programs being run through the city. The whole project is very impressive and with construction of the RC Sports Center, Rancho Cucamonga will soon be home to a sporting mega complex. The location was selected uh, due to its high sports influence already. Uh, we have quakes right across the street and um, with the addition of uh, Goals Soccer Complex to be completed um, also early next year, um, it seems like a good fit for a, a sports mega complex or epicenter as we like to call it. And that is certainly not overstating it. With the addition of the RC Sports Center and the Goals Soccer Facility, Rancho Cucamonga will truly be the epicenter for local sports. I'm David Wiley for RC Spotlight. The Felipe Winery is celebrating the 95th harvest here in Rancho Cucamonga. David Wiley shows us why the winery is an important part of the city's history. The Joseph Felipe Winery is a Rancho Cucamonga landmark that is carrying on the long Rancho Cucamonga tradition of producing top quality wines. Celebrating its 95th harvest this year, five generations of the Felipe family have pursued winemaking here in the Cucamonga Valley. In 1922 was the first harvest, commercial, commercially operating. My grandfather and my great-grandfather 
but my great grandfather came here in 1904 and worked for the Italian Vineyard Company in Guasti. It's hard to imagine, but Guasti and the whole Cucamonga Valley region was filled with vineyards and wineries in the early part of the last century. But those numbers dwindled over the years as grapes gave way to development. Today, Felipe Winery remains one of the few active wineries in the region. While smaller than in the past, the Felipe Winery still maintains 30 acres of vineyards, growing red varietals and producing top-notch wine out of this historic building along Baseline Road. The grape that we grow and the wines we make have changed for the better. We're growing grape that no one ever has before here now. And much of the credit for the good local grapes used in their delicious red wines come from two factors. The dirt, the heat, red grape. good red wines. I think it makes some really good grape. It intensifies like the Petite Syrah and gives bold Zinfandels. And while the Felipe Winery has just wrapped up its 95th harvest, the winemaking process is a year-round endeavor. Yeah, harvest is the crazy time. You know, we have all the grapes coming in and there's a lot going on and, you know, it gets, can get kind of dirty and long hours. But, you know, the rest of the year, it's making sure the wines are aging well and just working on making the best wine we can. And making the best wine possible is part of the long family tradition here at the Felipe Winery. We still want to do what my grandfather always said and his intentions were to give a good bottle of wine at a good price. And our wine is good. And the prices are, are very good. These fantastic award-winning wines are available to the public at the historic Felipe Winery Tasting Room at 12467 Baseline Road. They're open Tuesday through Sunday. It's a fun place to hang out. They have regular events that include Taco Tuesday. They're also available for hosting special events. Wines can also be ordered online at josephfelipewinery.com and they have a wine club that will send you selected premium wines every three months. Visit the Felipe Winery for great wine and a look back at the winemaking history of Rancho Cucamonga. I'm David Wiley for RC Spotlight. The city celebrated its equestrian history with the annual Evening of the Horse, a day filled with competition, food, and community. Here's Madison Perry. Well, we all know that Rancho Cucamonga is a great place to live, but what many don't know is that the city is also a thriving horse community. For many years, our city has been home to Rising Stars Equestrian Therapy, a program allowing both the disabled and able-bodied communities to come out and ride horses. Well, about 50 years ago, my mother got involved with uh, therapeutic riding. And uh, when they moved into this area in 1975, they started the Rising Stars of Equestrian Therapy. It was under a different name at the time, but that's what it evolved into. So we've, uh, we've got uh, a couple of acres here that we had set up, and between her and my father, they got everything squared away and built and, and so that we can actually function out of here with a primary concern for the special needs individuals. It gives them not only uh, something special to do, you know, other than just sitting around playing games on their iPods and watching television, they can get out, they can get out, get some fresh air, get good exercise, and they can bond with the animals. And that's the big thing. The bonding that happens between uh, young people and horses is wonderful whether they have a mental problem or a physical problem or no problems at all. All right, spend some time with the horse and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're nestled right up at the base of Mount Baldy up on the Alta Loma area. Uh, easy to get to for everybody in the Inland Empire. We work a lot with uh, people not only here, but all over Southern California and they come and, and visit us. We're one of about maybe a half a dozen centers like this spread throughout Southern California. We're the oldest, we're probably the largest. 
but uh, it's, a, it's a real nice area. You've got a mountain view, you've got a view of the city, and so we, you know, the people that come here can relax and enjoy and work with the animals that we have available. Not only is Rising Stars equestrian therapy beneficial for challenged riders, but it also serves as a place for people of all ages and backgrounds to ride. Margaret, a 93-year-old Rancho Cucamonga resident, rides as a form of therapy for her back and to improve discomfort from old age. Well, I've known Rick and Pat for a long, long time, and I found out that they were had a horse ranch and people were coming to ride for their physical bodies problems they might have and I was having a backache at the time and I thought you know maybe it would work if I went there and they said it might help so I started riding with them a few months ago and it did help it was good to uh, it's been a long time since I've been on a horse so <laughs> getting back on a horse and riding around was was fun and I heard about other people that were doing it you know, the kids, for the same reason, I thought, well, hey, maybe it would help me, and it did. So I'm very thankful for it. On the other hand, a local resident takes her two-year-old daughter named Catherine out each week to ride because she's confident in the safety and training the ranch has to offer. She doesn't have any disability whatsoever. She's, in fact, very smart and very active. Um, she just, I, I, I feel safe here. I feel that she is safe. These horses are not your typical horses. They are well trained. They know what they're doing. And, um, you know, the, the people here are amazing. Rick and Pat, you know, they, they, they know what they're doing. So it makes me as a mother have um, the, I guess, the courage to allow my child to be in such a huge animal, you know, that could lead to injury but you know here I feel safe. I believe it helps my daughter um, not only with character building um, but she gets to um, have the discipline to ride. She has uh, the motivation to get up in the morning and get ready and come help. You know we learn about the horses which is wonderful. I mean we live in the city we don't get exposed to nature that much. So um, all that, it's, I think, is tremendously beneficial to her and for her future. She, she lights up every morning. She goes, let's go ride with me, you know? And um, it's just, just priceless to me. Each year, the Equestrian Center partners with the city of Rancho Cucamonga to put on the annual Evening of the Horse event at Heritage Park. From jumping mules to mini donkeys, awards, and shows, the event brings the community together to celebrate its equestrian history. The Evening of the Horse is a great event to go to. Uh, one of the main reasons is you'll get to see uh, a young riders, old riders, riders with disabilities, riders that jump, and it really gives a clear picture uh, of what people are able to do, both challenged and non-challenged on the horse. Evening of the Horse, we set this up about five years ago. And the idea was not to be a fundraiser of any you know, way, shape, or form, but it was to let the people in the community know about the fact that this is an equestrian community. It was established that way. Uh, but over the years, a lot of the people that were here originally have gone away or passed away or whatever. And so there's not that many people now that are really involved with the horses. Although I would imagine there's a little over 200 some odd horses here just in the Rancho area. But uh, not as many as there used to be. So we said, well, let's put together a program, you know, that we can let the people know and invite them to come and see what's available here and who lives here in this community. So the city and Rising Stars, you know, collaborated on that one and set it up. It was such a big success. The first year we had reservations for dinner for 69 and we fed 140, and which was a big stretch. But uh, ever since then we've had, you know, about 120, 130 people that will show up. We have a dinner program, you know, a dinner and then the program afterwards to show them all the different breeds and they get a chance then afterwards to walk around, talk with these horses, talk with the people that own them and, and it's, it's a real nice evening. Rising Stars Equestrian Therapy is currently looking for businesses within the Inland Empire to partner and donate to the nonprofit so that riders can continue to come out and grow through the program. I'm a local business owner, so my business will always um, 
support this and everything I do, this will be the nonprofit that I hang my hat on. So we're looking forward to, you know, this is upcoming year. We've got a whole new push for the social media. We have a website. We've been on that for, you know, a couple of years. But uh, the social media thing that's so big now, uh, I have no knowledge of whatsoever. But uh, our vice president is going to start handling that and really promoting us. And hopefully we can get some, you know, funds in here that will let us continue to operate and uh, function at a higher level for our patients. Thanks for watching this episode of Healthy RC. I'm Madison Perry and we'll see you next time. Each year the city celebrates its birthday with the annual Founders Day Parade. The festival makes its way from Day Creek and Foothill Boulevard to the city's epicenter. Here's a closer look. Join us for some hometown fun on Saturday, November 11th for the Rancho Cucamonga Founders Day Parade. This year's theme is 40 years of hometown heroes, honoring our veterans and local heroes. The parade winds down Day Creek Boulevard south of Foothill and ends at the epicenter. And it's all happening on Saturday, November 11th at 9 a.m. Parade entry applications are free and online at cityofrc.us. Deadline for entries October 1st. Don't miss the Rancho Cucamonga Founders Day Community Parade, Saturday, November 11th at 9 a.m. All right, everybody, good morning and welcome to the Founders Day Parade, our favorite day of the year. I love this. What a great way to kick in the uh, holiday season with the Founders Day Parade. Yes, definitely. And you know, this is a, a, a continuous thing for us. We kind of do this every year. We're partners. Um, I'm your host, Ruth Leal. And I'm David Wiley. You might see me on uh, Healthy RC Living, the TV show. And that we're... voice is pretty much <laughs> <laughs> We are so glad to be here, and I can see the parade. You can hear the sirens just about to reach our booth. Yeah, we're excited. Hopefully you'll enjoy the parade. I'm tuning in to watch us either on Channel 3 or online. Exciting. We're going to be all over the place this year. And this year's theme, celebrating fun and games. So we'll see what they come up with this year. Um, my name is Ruth Leal. I've been hosting the parade for so many years, I can't even remember how many. And with me this morning is, of course, my co-host, David Wiley. And we're saying good morning to Sheriff John McMahon. All right. In addition, the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Rangers, the oldest search and rescue team, the Sheriff's Rangers are the personal posse and color guard for the Sheriff of San Bernardino County. Big hand for them. The Sheriff's Rangers have supported the Sheriff and progressive law enforcement since they were formed in 1935. All right, it's always nice to have the community out. Thank you all for showing up this morning at the Founders Day Parade. This is one of those exciting times every year. We get to see our neighbors and everybody in the community. So thank you, good morning. And every year we get fantastic weather. I know I say this, but uh, just fantastic Southern California weather. I'm just thankful. I've been at the parade hosting many a year when it was pouring rain on us. So you're right. Thankful. All right. Good morning to our Rancho Cucamonga police dogs. That's Dare and Smokey. Good morning. Oh, he's excited to be in the parade. I know. Beautiful colors and beautiful color dogs. Alright everybody, well let the parade begin. Welcome to the 2016 City of Rancho Cucamonga's Founders Festival Community Parade. The parade theme is this year is celebrating fun and games. Today carrying the lead banner is our very own Rancho Cucamonga Lady Aces Softball Club. You know what's cool is, and I don't know if this will pick up on the microphone, but they're chanting, success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction and knowing you did the best to become the best lady ace you're capable of becoming. And that is basically a paraphrase of the great coach John Wooden. 
All right, well, thank you for participating, ladies. You girls look fabulous. We have more entrants coming down the way. This is one of the best parades in the Inland Empire. I might be a little biased as a Rancho Cucamonga resident, but... Oh, why? Why, why? <laughs> Tell us. Because Rancho Cucamonga is one of the best cities around. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> You know, as a resident, you have to say our city facilities, the organizations that we have in town, our schools and everything are just top notch. And you can see that by how many people are out here supporting our city um, and how many entrants we have in the parade that are local, that are here from Rancho Cucamonga. And it's true. If you're out in the community and you talk to people from other cities, <laughs> they all want to emulate Rancho Cucamonga because they do it right here. Yeah, it's great. It's called planning. Mm -hmm. We do a whole lot of that here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, well... Our next entry coming down is the Rancho Cucamonga Fire District. Proudly serves our community, providing emergency response to all hazards, as well as risk reduction and emergency preparedness programs and outreach. This entry includes the Honor Guard Pipes and Drums Band, followed by personnel marching and the Hook and Ladder Fire Truck, and an antique fire engine as well. The Ready RC Van will also be accompanied by a handful of marchers. I just love hearing the pipe and band. See, our CERT team is here. Mm -hmm. These are community members that are out there training for an emergency. Should we uh, have an earthquake or another big fire or a wind event, they're going to be here helping uh, our emergency crews help our community. And thank you for your volunteering. Yeah, we do need to be prepared. Now look high in the sky, you'll see the balloon. This is the city of Rancho Cucamonga. It's presenting the parade themed logo balloon. This year's theme, as we mentioned earlier, is celebrating fun and games. Now, Ruth, did you ever play Twister? Um, yeah, but maybe that's a long oh, time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> did you know that Twister used to be called Pretzel? A little wow. trivia there for you. All right. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the students and faculty of Los Osos High School and the Chafee Joint Union High School District are proud to present the 2016 edition of the Los Osos Marching Regiment. 255 strong, these students represent one of the very finest high schools in the Inland Empire and continue year after year to represent our community with excellence in music education. Woo, 255 student marching band playing Oh When the Saints Go Marching In in a traditional parade band style with color guard. of New Orleans. I know, their band instructor Sam and Dress is going down. He does a great job with them.
Pelosos High School Regiment Band. All right. Wow. What well, a big group. Fantastic. They are a big group. Wonderful high school. Los Osos. Coming up next, the city of Rancho Cucamonga welcoming Mark Christopher Auto Center. Wow, and look Mark, at a float. We've yeah, got a couple of cheerleaders. It's a great float, and it fits right with our theme, fun and games. They are our presenting sponsor this year. Mark Christopher Auto Center, Southern California's number one volume GM dealer, family owned and operated since 1975. Thank you, Mark Christopher, for your continued support. Good morning. They're giving a couple cheerleaders a ride. <laughs> very nice of them <laughs> all right well joining us for the parade today we've got our mayor Dennis Michael and Dennis is a lifelong resident of Rancho Cucamonga and he has two children and six lovely grandchildren he began his career as a firefighter with the Rancho Cucamonga Fire District in 1976 and he retired in 2003 from his position as fire chief Throughout his professional career and personal endeavors, Dennis has been involved in numerous organizations and community charities, including the Rotary Club, Ranch Cucamonga Family YMCA, Boy Scouts, and the Byrne Institute of Inland Empire, which Chief Michael was instrumental in forming. So we thank you. Dennis was elected to the Ranch Cucamonga City Council in November 2004, and he served as our Mayor Pro Tem from 2008 to 2010. And of course, he's been our Mayor since November 2nd, 2010. Good morning. Good morning, and there's Councilman and Mayor Pro Tem Sam Spagnola, 45-year resident of Rancho Cucamonga, attended JP College, and retired fire captain with 33 years of service. Thank you, Sam. He is the creator of the Ashley Smith Fund for Child Burn Victims, founders of, of the city's CPR and first aid program, volunteers for Spark of Love, Toy Drive, and as a past board member for the American Heart Association. Thank you, Sam. Well, and next up we have council member Bill Alexander. He was first elected to city council in 1988 and re-elected in 1992. He has been serving the city for quite a amount of time and he is our current council member. He graduated from Montclair High School and he has served in the fire service for about 35 years and retired. So good morning, Bill. Next up, council member Lynn Kennedy, lifelong resident of the Inland Empire and a graduate of San Bernardino High School. <laughs> She holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Redlands, master's degree from Cal State San Bernardino, and a PhD, oh, I guess I should have said Dr. Kennedy, PhD, <laughs> from Claremont Graduate University, been married to her high school sweetheart, Michael, for 38 years. 39! Oh! Congratulations. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Good morning. Well, next up we have council member Diane Williams. She's a native Californian. She's been very active in our community for many years, working with the incorporation of the city and the establishment of our very own city library. Uh, Diane serves on the board of the Sam and Alfreda Malouf Foundation for the Arts and Crafts and is a member of the Rotary Club of Rancho Cucamonga. One of Diane's and Paul, her husband, most recent ventures is the Pacific Electric Trail, and currently she is cruising a Pacific Electric Railway Museum in the historic Etiwanda train station. Ooh. Diane's always busy, and she if you want to get busy. stuff done, talk to Diane. <laughs> She's the gal to do it. Good morning to you, Em. And that wraps up this edition of RC Spotlight, where we showcase how to live, work, and play in Rancho Cucamonga. If you tuned in late, don't worry. You can watch RC Spotlight on Channel 3 at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. every day, except for Wednesday, and online at the city's website, as well as our new blog. Check it out. I'm your host, Heather Dawson. We'll see you next time.